Aziz, you have signed up to play linebacker for Mike Vrabel. <laughs> Did you knowingly do that or were you tricked? <laughs> no, nah, they tricked me, man. They didn't make a sign. <laughs> Tell me, I mean, Vrabel was a good linebacker, and the, the linebackers who play for him, he holds extra responsible. But I'm guessing from where you come from and what your background is, you almost welcome that, don't you? Oh, 100%. I think um, from being in San Francisco for the last four years, like we consider ourselves the best linebacker group in the NFL, you know, in the world because – NFL is the highest group you can get. And so if you're the best in the NFL, you're the best in the world. Um, and that's just something that we stood by. We put we put the, the defense on our shoulders. We put a lot on our plate as a group to say, hey, man, like, if we play well, the whole team will. So, you know, that's the same mentality. That's the only mentality I've known. And so, you know, with Coach Rabel, like, I, I wouldn't expect anything less. Like, he doesn't even have to tell me that. That's something I feel myself, you know, even talking uh, with the coaches. Like, that's just kind of the mentality that, I want to bring is to make sure that's like, hey, like, we got to hold our weight. We got to set the standards. So, because that's the same mentality we had in San Fran. When the Titans played San Francisco two days before Christmas in 2021, we met with Coach Vrabel before the broadcast. And in the production meeting, he said that that linebacking core was as on point as anybody he had ever seen, that that's what really impressed him, that you guys, whether it's run or pass or whatever, you guys didn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. How did it come to be that that group and your play would be so on point in that way? Man, I think years of gelling with each other with a combination of, you know, Johnny Holland, like, man, one of the best coaches I've ever had and got to be coached by, you know, it was an honor. Uh, he's literally like a grandfather to me, you know what I'm saying? Like the man, like, He's gonna be on you about everything, but he's, he's he's really big on positive like reinforcement. And I think he just, he made people, he can make the sorriest player feel as if he was the best person in the room. Like that's the, that's the energy that he brings, that's the mentality that he had. And he was gonna have you prepared for every meeting, every game, anything you face. Um, and I think when you just buy into that, you know, and over years of the same thing, you know, it just, it only got stronger, so. I mean, I think that's how you do that. When you play with love uh, for each other, you know, you play with a bond for your brother, you don't want to make mistakes. You want to make sure that you go out there and play as hard as you can, play your best. And, you know, that's what we're able to accomplish and do at times. What does Aziz Alshire bring to the meeting rooms here, knowing that it's going to be a very young room that yeah. you're going to walk into? Yeah, honestly, I feel like I bring a lot of experience, a lot of leadership and the aspect like I've been through I was undrafted, you know. When you're undrafted, it's like I try to explain to all the guys, uh, you know, especially the college guys, being undrafted in the NFL is like being a walk-on in college football. Like you're you're at the very bottom of the totem pole. So you know, when you, I remember Quan Alexander, he's like a brother to me, and coming in, we both tore our ACLs the same time, almost like two, three days apart from each other, uh, my senior year of college and his last year in Tampa. And uh, we rehabbed together, did everything together. Obviously, Quan signed like a $57 million contract, something like that. You know, I signed undrafted free agent. The first day of training camp, when we both are ready to play, you look at the depth chart, Quan Alexander, <laughs> number one starter. And then I see my name, and I remember it was 10 guys in there. And I was literally the 10th guy on the depth chart. And I remember just laughing, because me and Quan sat next to each other, and I was just laughing to myself, just like, you know, like, here, here it goes again. Like, you got to start from the bottom up. And uh, you know, going through all that and going through all the highs and lows that I went through in San Francisco over the last four years, and I've been to three NFC championships in four years uh, playing in the NFL, you know? So I feel like all the experience I have from that and also just personally in my own life, you know, I can bring a lot to the table just in that room uh, with those guys, just really helping them uh, grow as better players because the same men my mentality that Johnny had, you know, he instilled in me and I, I, I feel the same way, like I know uh, I can get the most out of the guys around me. Uh, and I think that in order to get the most out of each other, you gotta build chemistry with each other. And you gotta like build that bond because if you don't have it, it'll be cool when things are good. But as soon as like you start losing or you have a tough game or somebody makes a bad play, now everybody's like, oh, screw that dude. Like he gotta figure it out on his own. When it's family, when it's somebody that you care about, you know, you're like, listen, we're gonna figure this out together, so. Pros have to be resilient, but 100%. your life story is one of resiliency. I mean, remarkable. Family of nine, 
right? Yes, sir. It was okay. eight, eight children and my mother, so okay. I guess nine. So your house is on fire and you wake up and get everybody out of the house and that's great, but then you're homeless. Mm -hmm. And then you have to fight through all of that, making through, making sure brothers and sisters get fed, taking extra recruiting trips for food before you go to Florida Atlantic, taking two of your brothers with you to Florida Atlantic to make sure they're taken care of. So being resilient as a football player, it must feel like nothing to you <laughs> after how your life had prepared you for your career. 100%, I think um, that's one of the biggest things that I've relied on to get me through the football stuff is, you know, I think football is like, it's, it's like controlled chaos. And I think when you take a like, a broader look at not just football, but look at the world and like, imagine being in those situations, I'm 13 years old, you know, when, that, when the fire had happened, so it's like, if I got through all those things and I made it to be here, I'll be fine while I'm here. So that's kind of just like always been something I carried myself with and had that little chip on my shoulder that kind of just brought me all the way through. And even through the hard times through football, I just kept pushing and I was able to see the light. Wrap this up for us with this. How would you describe the linebacker, the football player, the person that Aziz Alshire is to the Titans fans. What is this team getting in you? Man, you're getting a guy that has passion, has love for the game. I'm so grateful for just everything that I've accomplished in life, everything that I've been able to, to, to do in my lifetime and getting here. Uh, and I'm gonna give you everything I got, like 100%. Like my blood, sweat, and tears is gonna go into what I do. I take everything I do very seriously. But I also have fun with it. I like to put a smile on my face all the time. My grandfather always telling me to smile. Big old smile, he called me Smiley O'Reilly when I was a little kid, my mama did. So, um, you know, I just bring a lot of energy, a lot of positivity. Um, I love to give back in the community. So you'll see my face a lot uh, in the community, hopefully really soon. And, and I'm just excited to be here, man. Excited for the opportunity.